I have a brand new account and we're going to see how fast I can black border monkey meadow. The timer starts when I hit play for the first time and it will end when we beat every difficulty. Because it is my first time loading into the game, I had to go through the tutorial, but that was pretty quick as I just front loaded the track and we were done with it in just over two minutes. Plus, we unlocked the bomb shooter. Now, I basically didn't plan anything for this. I just knew that starting with the easier difficulties was the way to go so I could unlock higher tier upgrades for tough modes like half cash and chimp. So we started on easy with Quincy and some dart monkeys. I wasn't sure how much I should front load the track since I had no upgrade, so I put Quincy in a safe spot by the loops and started spamming dart monkeys near the entrance. This worked very well with only a few bloons making it to Quincy. Things were going great, but then we started unlocking towers and I was not prepared to pick them quickly. I panicked and chose the tack shooter, then the ice, boomer, and glue. Now, on the fly, I started placing down towers that I wanted experience on, while also trying to pop the bloons as fast as possible. Luckily, we got the sniper next, and this was a huge help to popping the weak bloons right away, even with unupgraded towers. But this hodgepodge of crossbows, snipers, and a few miscellaneous monkeys was enough to take down easy, and next was primary only. This was nice because I basically only had primary monkeys unlocked so far, and I wanted to get some more XP on them. I started by getting a dart monkey down for the early rounds, and then I'd work with a bomb shooter. I wanted to have recursive clusters for half cash, so I should probably start now. Then I got down attack shooter, because we'll want attack zone for either impoppable or chimps, and then I spammed some boomerangs, as we all know that mob presses are incredibly strong, especially for how cheap they are. But this popped the mob pretty quick, we unlocked Gwendolyn, then I instantly equipped her and started medium standard. We skipped deflation because I wanted more upgrades for that, but something I overlooked was that we can't afford Gwen right away. So I plopped down two boomers near the loops and hit start. Unfortunately, I was on a roll of bad decisions as I put these guys too far back, wasting time with every round as it took a bit for the balloons to get into their range. Oh well, chugging on was faster than restarting, so once I got red hot rangs on both of them, I put a dart at the beginning and saved up for a druid. Now, I knew that druids would be our best friend for this speedrun as druids of the jungle have global range and just plow through the early game. So I got three of them down to get experience faster. Moving on, I got some ninjas for extra camo popping power and got two bionic boomerangs to handle the tougher balloons and mobs. We slowly upgraded the ninjas and also got down two cluster bombs for any rushes, especially ceramic ones. Things were going great, though we were still lacking on camo popping power and even got a scare on round 42, but we scraped by. Then we unlocked and placed the strongest tower in the game, the Alchemist. I obviously wanted stronger stim for later, so I got two of them down to accrue experience. And this is when we unlocked the recursive cluster, so I got both of my bomb shooters to 204s, and I knew that we had this difficulty locked down so I could focus on experience for others. Just spend some more money on ninjas, snipers, and alchemists, and the future is looking bright. And we popped the BFB in a matter of seconds. Once again, we'll start with boomerangs. I'm used to these guys being absolute machines in the early game, but that's with the monkey knowledge point that lets the boomerangs loop twice. And because we don't have any monkey knowledge on this account, um, they've been pretty underwhelming, but good enough for now. Anyway, I put them close enough to the beginning to be fast and then worked on getting a Wall of Fire Wizard, the other classic speedrunning tower. Next, I got Gwen on that straightaway and used her cocktail to pop the round 24 camo balloon. Then I got some ninjas for future camos, buffed them with an alchemist, and got down a druid of the jungle for even more speed. At this point, we were cooking through the rounds, but that is pretty easy to do when you're only going to round 60. I finally unlocked the village, which we'll be using in just about every run going forward, and I placed some recursive clusters in its range to handle anything tough. At this point, our only real weakness was not having much camo popping power at our disposal, so I rushed the radar scanner unlock even before getting jungle drums. I figured we already had the popping power, and I wanted to cross out camos from our short list of lost conditions. Technically, losing on a difficulty wouldn't make us restart, but it wouldn't be much of a speedrun if we failed a difficulty and had to do it again. But with some Dragon's Breath Wizards, we had more than enough popping power to beat round 60 pretty quick. Next was military only, and I made a huge mistake. I kept Gwen on, so the only start we could do was with Sniper. And this started off very slow. But once we got three of them down, the round started going by pretty quick and even let us save up for Gwen. Then we got another sniper and upgraded one of them to a 1-2-0 so its shrapnel would shred the early rounds. And once we had enough money, I sold two of the snipers and made a remaining one into a faster shooting shrapnel sniper. This way, we had plenty of crowd control, lead popping power, and camo detection for the coming rounds. But after a third sniper, I figured it was time to work on the ace, especially since that is what I wanted to bring into deflation. But at about the same time that we got that down, we unlocked more sniper upgrades, so say hello to two Two shrapnel full auto snipers, one bouncing bullet sniper, and a single target full auto rifle set to strong. This way, we'll be able to shred mob quest balloons and all the ceramics inside, and with that, the BFB didn't stand a chance. Onto hard mode, we'll start with a boomer and dart monkey near the front, which worked great for round three, but round four is low key one of the hardest rounds in the game, and the last few balloons actually made it pretty far, wasting precious time early on. But we upgraded our boomer and got two support snipers down, and we were flying through the rounds once again. Then we got down Gwen, upgraded our 
our dart to a crossbow for camo detection and worked on a druid of the jungle which is quickly becoming our go-to tower of the day after that i upgraded our snipers to a shrapnel line gave one lead popping power and gave the other two faster shooting then rounded out the trifecta by buffing them all with an alchemist this was working great as the balloons were mostly getting popped off screen and gave me time to work on some village experience once that was down i went and upgraded all of our snipers to bouncing bullets and started getting miscellaneous towers like ninjas and alchemists just to get their xp up this was going great until the 50s when i realized that mob class balloons would give us some time problems so i made a 204 sniper set to strong with the sole purpose of destroying that blimp layer then round 63 came a usual round killer but i was more worried about the time it would take to pop them luckily it doesn't matter how long it takes us to pop the first two waves of ceramics because we'd be waiting for the rest of the balloons to spawn anyway so i saved gwen's level 10 ability for the last wave and headed into round 64 a few seconds faster than we would have with just a cocktail then in the late 70s i wanted to see how fast a 205 elite defender would pop mob class balloons so i sold two bouncing bullets and upgraded to our first tier 5 monkey on this account it's funny because i rarely use this upgrade on my main but we we really rushed it for the speed run around this time i got the stronger stim upgrade unlocked which means i'd be ready for some harder modes pretty soon but all i had to do was load the track with recursives and some tack shooters and i knew we'd pop the zomg super fast so fast in fact that the whole thing was covered by nod narb's raid which I guess is one way to get into a video. Anyway, we unlocked Obin after that game, so it was the perfect time to load into Magic Monkeys only. Or so I thought. Because we aren't running any monkey knowledge or using powers, I was not able to start with Obin like I had planned, and instead I opted for a ninja for some silly reason. It was so silly that I was leaking on round four, wasting our precious time. Already not a perfect run, but once again, restarting to use a druid would set us back even farther. So I just popped a few balloons on round five and was able to afford a druid to help us out. Pretty soon we got to the point where I could sell the ninja and get a druid of the jungle to speed up the rounds, and with the leftover money, I plopped down Obin and bought a new ninja closer to the entrance. Time to get this guy to a balloon jitsu and buff him with an alchemist, and this run is starting to look like one I would do on my main account. And it was at this point where Obin really started helping us out as he finally unlocked Wall of Trees, which I started placing as far forward as I could. This was super nice as it insta popped tons of balloons while also giving us a bunch of extra money to spend on defenses. But the rest of this run was very straightforward. We got a summon Phoenix Wizard to destroy the tough rounds, another ninja, a super monkey, and some pop plus druids just in case I want to get an avatar of wrath for chimps. After that, I kind of just spammed towers near the front to pop the balloons quickly, and just like that, Magic Monkeys only has been completed. We rushed into double HP mobs, remembered the tough start from last game, and opted for a druid at the start of the loops. This and a dart monkey let us save all the way up for a druid of the jungle, and then we placed down Owen. This start has been our bread and butter and I planned on running it until it stopped working. After that, it was time to get some tack shooters at the entrance because double HP mobs are tough to take down even when not speed running. So I wanted to get some overdrives up there but didn't quite have the experience for them yet. Next was camo detection. So we upgraded a ninja to double shot and everything was looking good. Now to get a cluster bomb, balloon jitsu and a berserker brew and it'll be time to take on round 40. I was pretty scared as this mob is super tanky and most of my damage is at the front of the track and not by the loops. So I wasn't sure what to expect. Unfortunately, it did make it about halfway through the track, but we did manage to pop it and not leak at all. After that, I got a 320 village and another tax sprayer preparing for that overdrive unlock. And after two recursive clusters, it was time to get some more ace XP as I want to bring a never miss into deflation for an easy win. Once again, I placed trees at the front of the track and I got two mob press boomers to keep all the blimps near the front where all of my damage is. But even with those, reinforced mobs were getting farther than I'd like, so I upgraded a sniper to a 204 and made my ace a fighter pilot to pop those tough layers much faster now it was clear that i wasn't going to get the overdrives at a reasonable time so i just got down another ninja near the front some bouncing bullet snipers for ceramics and then i spent my extra money on tack shooters and ice monkeys as i'd like to run a super brittle tack zone on impoppable though that would require a lot of experience and i'm not sure if we'll make it there round 77 is when we finally unlocked our overdrive upgrade and i upgraded them asap these would have been super clutch for this run and if i could do it over i'd make sure to have them unlocked by the time i did double hp mobs nevertheless they were super valuable for rounds 79 and 80 so i can't complain too much and with that double hp mobs has been beaten so we're over halfway through the medals and only an hour and 19 minutes into the run not bad considering the world record is two hours and 15 minutes done by frosty mate but with a full account and on a map with water but now that we have enough upgrades it was time to take on deflation so i plopped down a 220 village a never miss ace a stronger stim alchemist Oban, and a wall of fire wizard and this handled deflation in about five minutes not bad at all. Now I had three options, half cash, apocalypse, or alternate balloon rounds. Now I knew I wasn't ready for half cash and apocalypse is my kryptonite, so I hopped into ABR. I started with a druid and immediately regretted it as camos come on round five, wasting tons of time. 
but we chugged along and I made sure to get a ninja down next. Now, all I had to do was get hard thorns on the druid and we'd have all of our bases covered. Normals, leads, and camos are all easily popped with this setup and let me save up for Oban. Now, I really wanted to get a druid of the jungle, but I figured upgrading the ninja and getting a 120 sniper was a safer bet, especially with that nasty camo lead that comes in round 24. And you know I went for a druid of the jungle right after. Now to just get a bloom jitsu and a berserker brew and it looks like a pretty standard run. The problem was that I was just struggling to stay alive, so my pace was not very good through this difficulty so far, but that was about to change. I got a mope muller near the start, set it to strong, and we popped that fortified mope in a surprisingly short amount of time. But it was time to focus on speed. So I placed a wall of fire wizard on top of the track and an overdrive on bottom. This will absolutely shred most mobs and bloons upon entering this beautiful monkey meadow. Speaking of overdrives, might as well get another one up for more mob popping power and we'll pair it with a bouncing bullet sniper that'll handle the ceramics. Absolutely beautiful. This is right when we unlocked wall of trees, so you know I put those up front and I placed down an ice monkey in hopes of getting an embrittlement for even more damage. But after that, I didn't know what to do so I just placed down another overdrive and then buffed them all with a 320 primary training village. It seemed like a reasonable thing to do and one might say that it worked wonderfully. Next, I upgraded the sniper to a main mob to keep the BFBs and future ZOMG in range of the overdrive so we can hastily shred these outer layers. But that was really all we needed. I got some miscellaneous support, but we kind of just coasted to round 80 where we tore apart the ZOMG. On to half cash, which some say is harder than chimps, especially when you have no monkey knowledge like I do. But the real question is how fast can we beat it? I started with just a dart monkey and I knew I had to put it in a normal spot and not at the very start of the track. And even with good positioning, we still leaked 14 lives in round four. Luckily, this gave us enough money for another dart monkey and we were actually handing the rounds just fine. Fast forward several rounds and we placed Oban right below them. Pretty confident in handling the rounds, I sold the dart monkeys and replaced them with attack shooter as I wanted an overdrive in that specific spot for mob popping power later on. And although it was never smooth sailing or particularly fast, I'd say it was a decent track to attack sprayer and a bomb shooter with no real moments of panic, especially since we could throw down brambles at any point to help out. But it was round 32 when I remembered that we had quite a few camo balloons to pop soon, yet none of our towers could see them. Oops. So I got down a dart monkey and gave him those magical red wristbands that allow you to see camos, and this was just in time as round 33 was popped with a combination of him and some brambles. Then I made him a crossbow and we had all our bases covered. Camos, leads, purples, you name it. So I upgraded our bomb shooter to a cluster bomb just for some rush defense and then started worrying about the round 40 mo. There really wasn't much we could do at this point, so I placed an ace and started to pray that we don't leak a ton of balloons and have to start over. And bang, we popped the final few balloons on the last pass before the exit. Absolutely calculated. Now we need three things for the 40s and up. Much more camo detection, some more ceramic defense, and more mob popping power. Camos took priority because some thick rounds are coming soon, so I got down a radar scanner. Pretty expensive, but worth the reliability and I'll be getting jungle drums later on anyway. Next was more mob popping power, so I saved up until round 49 where I could finally afford an overdrive tax shooter in that beautiful spot where the dart monkeys were back at the beginning of this run. What's funny is at this point you can see that I had tons of upgrades ready to be unlocked, but I was focused on going as fast as possible. So even even though these upgrade icons annoyed me very much, I tuned them out as much as possible to save a few seconds. But at this point, I upgraded the ace to a never miss and gladly accepted that global popping power into our lineup. Now to buff it with an alchemist and then place Oban's trees at the start of the track and we were actually sitting pretty pretty. We just had to worry about round 63, but it's nothing a recursive cluster and a primary training village can't handle, right? Right. That plus trees gave us enough money for another cluster bomb to put this round away and the overdrive took care of round 64 as it popped the outer layers of the blimps on the first pass and there's not much more you can ask from an overdrive. But this carried us basically through the rest of the run. I got a wall of fire wizard up front in hopes of shaving off a few seconds over the next 10 rounds and I upgraded it to a necromancer. No real reason there, just for fun and prepping to get a prince of darkness in a different game mode. And then I got a bouncing bullet sniper for some extra cleanup and it was more than enough to take out the ZOMG. And just like that, half cash has been beaten, meaning we only have three medals left and we're on to apocalypse. The difficulty that I normally struggle with, but I also find incredibly enjoyable when hunting for black borders. Anyway, because it has medium prices, we could start with Oban and after playing half cash my brain was stuck in placing monkeys in normal spots so unfortunately Oban is by the loops and not the beginning costing us a good amount of time. Next I got a ninja down for those early camos and made sure that brambles was always being used. Then I placed our most used monkey of this challenge a druid of the jungle. Now we're cruising through the rounds and I learned something new. A 030 druid's vine will remove the regrow property from leads that pass over it even when it can't pop them directly. The more you know. Now to get a 120 sniper for more global popping power and camo detection and then I upgraded the ninja to a 30 
302 double shot. We were sitting pretty solid, popping just about everything before they even came on the screen, which is exactly what we needed. We followed this up with a classic Berserker Brew Blue and Jitsu combo, and then got a 220 village to buff all of our monkeys. I was pretty confident that we'd be set for a while, so I started to get some engineer and farm XP as I really wanted to run a balloon trap and banana banks in Impopable, and we had almost no experience on these two so far. Then the 50s came. By far the hardest part of Apocalypse, as tons of fortified mobs come out of nowhere and are followed by a slew of difficult balloons to pop like camo lead. But I upgraded my sniper to a main mob to lock up the dub. I know that it did slow us down by a few seconds, as most of our damage was not at the very front of the track where things were getting stunned, but it was definitely worth guaranteeing the win. Then I just sold the farms and got up a bouncing bullet sniper for some global cleanup and placed Oban's trees and we were off to impoppable. Here I opted for the super safe double dart start. This manhandles the early rounds and to speed things up I even got a third one down which easily let us save up for Oban. Now I did have a plan in mind for this run, so I sold the dart monkeys to be able to fit Oban and a druid exactly where I wanted them. Obviously. I got a druid of the jungle and then moved into a Blunjitsu Berserker Brew combo again. This has become our standard start, but what would Impopable be without farming? Correct, it would be boring. So I got down an engineer in the hopes of making it a balloon trap as that'd make us some good money while also cruising through the rounds. Unfortunately, I still didn't have enough experience on him, so we'll be waiting for that upgrade to be unlocked. While we're waiting, I started traditional farming over on the right side. I knew that we had plenty of defenses not only to beat the rounds but do so in a timely manner so this was a pretty safe play that'll help us later on. And pretty soon we actually unlocked Banks which was a nice surprise as I wasn't expecting that for a while. Unfortunately we still didn't have the XP for a Bloon Trap so I had to get a stronger stim and a village to keep us plowing through the rounds and we managed to get a bank in round 50. The sad thing is that they're much worse without monkey knowledge as they cap out at $7,000 instead of $9,500. But round 50 opened my eyes to how far mob class balloons would get through this setup. Not far enough to worry me about losing, but far enough to justify more defenses as it's taking us too long to pop them. So I did the most monkey meadow thing I could think of, a popless druid strat. I placed down six more druids, got a couple of them to 014s, went back to make our second farm a bank, then made all of my druids of wrath into poplus. Here, I finally accepted the fact that the balloon trap would not be too helpful, so I sold the engineer to get our other towers up and running faster. Now we have tons of defense with these poplus, but we need to save up a ton of money to upgrade our druids into a spirit of the forest and or an avatar of wrath. So naturally, I got two more banks to speed up this process. And on round 80, I collected from them all and was able to purchase a spirit of the forest. I actually had enough to get an avatar of wrath but i figured the global vines would pop the rounds faster especially since the avatar would have been by the loops and not the very beginning of the track after this i got a few ice monkeys down to try to unlock embrittlement i got a tag zone up front and on round 91 i sold my banks and made my alchemist a perma brew this is super nice as it let me get my village all the way to a primary expertise which made our tag zone an absolute beast and with that we took down impoppable and got our first insta monkey for our troubles and that means we only have one difficulty left for that succulent black border Probably my favorite game mode, Chimps. I was hoping that we'd have enough monkey money to afford Sada for this as she's a speed running master, but after 13 difficulties, we're only about halfway to being able to afford her. Oh well, we'll keep running with our main man, Oban. But at the start of the run, I had a big decision. Do I start with several dart monkeys and get annoyed with them later on because we can't sell anything, or do I roll the dice, be an absolute mad lad, and start with a monkey that I'd like to keep for the entire run? Obviously, I chose the latter and started with a ninja and placed him in the loop. And although one balloon got really close to leaking on round 7, we pulled through and purchased Ninja Discipline, which is one of the best upgrades in the game in my eyes. Now safe and sound, I upgraded our ninja, placed Oban right below him, and got a 022 sniper down as I made a promise to chat for this run. I have to get an elite sniper and a Prince of Darkness. Normally, I'd only get one of those down and use the rest of the money on towers that'll destroy rounds 98 and 100, but this little challenge will make the ending much cooler. Anyway, I purchased Bloom Jitsu, Stronger Stimulant placed a Jungle Drums Village and then got a 220 Sniper set to Strong. My plan was to make this guy into a main mob and then make our other one into an Elite Sniper, but chat reminded me that we have no damage up front, so this stalling would be great for winning, but absolutely atrocious for speedrunning. Thanks guys, you're always looking out for me. Anyway, I panicked and made it into a 230 Bouncing Bullet, which I immediately regretted, but there was no going back. Luckily, this was more than enough defense to get my other sniper up to a 052, which dismantled the balloon. From here, I wanted to get a Prince of Darkness down, but it was clear that we needed more mo popping power if we were going to do this in a decent time. So I audibled after making the wizard a necromancer and placed down attack shooter. I got this guy all the way to attack zone, put an ice monkey right in front of it with the intent of making an embrittlement once we have the experience, and 
I gave it camo detection with the village. I found it pretty funny that we didn't need this reliable of camo detection until now, as most of our damage dealers have built in camo detection, but I certainly wanted our tax zone to always see camos, especially with the DDTs coming up. But this let me save all the way up for a Prince of Darkness, and then I got a Mib on round 89, just in time for the DDTs that come in the 90s. If you didn't know any better, you might even think that I planned it. Next, it was actually time for a May Mo because we do have some damage up front now, and at this point, the benefits it brings to the table far outweigh the few seconds that it might cost us. Following this, I got down an Unstable Concoction Alchemist up front to help pop blimp heavy rounds like 96 and 98. And at this point, I wasn't too worried, but all of my anxiety washed away when I saw how easily we handled round 95. It looks like our slew of cheap tier 5 towers is working out after all. With that round down and us shredding round 96, I was pretty confident, but there was one thing we still needed an embrittlement ice monkey as it'll make round 100 go by that much faster. So I got down a few more ice monkeys to speed up the experience gain and also got down a glue gunner because it would have been a crime if I never placed one throughout this entire challenge. But on round 98, we finally got embrittlement and made the ice monkey up front a 4-2-0. And with that, we popped the bat on the second pass, destroyed the innards, got awarded a beautiful banana farm insta monkey and got that black border. Now I didn't stop the timer right away, but upon review, my time was a little over two hours, 35 minutes, in two seconds, which is fast enough for sixth place, even though I did this with a fresh account. But some interesting things to know is that if you black border Monkey Meadow and do nothing else, you'll be level 46, have completed 10 achievements, have 16 monkey knowledge points, have 3,905 monkey money before the daily chest, and you'll unlock every tower, including the Dartling Gunner.